This is Phil Spencer, aka the man who single-handedly made me scream like a little girl when he decided to bring back my favourite game in franchise ever in Fable, you lovely, lovely man. You lovely man! So after watching the Fable reveal trailer a million times over and dissecting and analysing everything there is to dissect and analyse, I found a ton of information to share with all of you fine people. In this video I'm going to go over everything I noticed in the trailer and what all these little things mean for the next instalment of the Magnificent Fable series. Now real quick, before I begin, please remember this is all speculation on my behalf. A minute long CGI trailer can only give you so much information. Also, if you like Fable and want to keep up with any of the news regarding it, then do yourself a favour and subscribe. Trust me, you won't regret it. Or you will. But you know, that's what life's all about. Taking risks. And you subscribing to my channel is a risk that I'm willing to take. So do it. Do it now. Let's begin. So the first shot in the reveal trailer is of the sword with the guild markings on it. As soon as I saw the markings, this was my reaction. Guys, oh my... No way! The world no way! This is not happening right now! This is not happening right now! Now the guild markings on the sword lead us to believe a few things, mainly that heroes are still around as too is the guild. In Fable 2 and 3 you were the last real hero, so if the sword is a hint at a return to the age of heroes then it would be set at least a couple hundred years before Fable 2 or it's in a completely different universe to the previous titles. Moving on, we have this fairy. Now, fairies aren't anything new to Fable. We've had pixies and nymphs in the past, and if you know anything about the Fable lore, then fairies are a part of it. They're not a big part of it, but they're in the lore anyway. As the fairy moves across the land, you see it go towards the water, and then there's this big fish that splits into multiple smaller fish, and this is just showing off more creatures and fantasy elements within the trailer. So next we have this shot of the mushroom forest, and this looks really cool and dense and magical. I really like the lighting here. It shows off way more pixies and fairies in the background, and this little intro is basically showing off Fable's fantasy world. Fable 2, but specifically 3, really ditched the fantasy element that the first game brought in. And if you read any of the lore, you'd know there's a ton of more fantasy in the world that the games never explored. As technology advanced in the Fable universe, magical creatures lost their inhabitants and slowly died off. That's why, again, in Fable 2 and 3, we didn't have a lot of creatures as in Fable 1. Now with this shot here, the Fable charm is already being teased with the fairy getting gobbled up by the frog. A big part of Fable's charm to me is turning something really dark like a death into comedy. This scene kind of reminded me of how in Fable 1 you start the game off in Oak Vale in a lovely bright village going around doing funny stuff and buying a box of chocolates for your sister then all of a sudden bandits come in kill almost everyone and torch your village alight. Or more noticeably actually it reminded me of the intro to Fable 3 with the chicken running around Bowerstone and then the castle with it finally in the end getting shot as it was just about to fly off and escape. I saw a few people upset over the inclusion of a fairy calling the game things like Shrek or a kids movie, which is fine, it's your opinion, you're entitled to it, no problem, but I honestly took it as the game poking fun at the Disney PG kiddish crap by the fairy flying around and then just getting gobbled up. I don't know, I really liked it and honestly it felt very Fable-esque to me, especially with the narration, but to each their own. The pan up to the city looks so epic and shows off just a ton of information. We have a lot to dissect this, so let's just start this off. So the first thing, let's talk art style. It is very bright, very vibrant and saturated. Again, a part of Fable's charm is to have this beautiful fairy tale pixar like looking world that actually has a ton of dark themes within it that you wouldn't expect. The art style also looks a little bit more mature. We heard a while back that Playground Games wanted to make the game's art style more mature like The Witcher 3 and it does kind of show here though we haven't seen any humans yet so we won't really know until then. You can't tell too much as it is an early look so I don't want to judge it too fast as it would be quite nitpicky and unfair of me to do so but either way I think it looks really good. So because of the castle in the background I think everybody came to the same conclusion that this must be Bowerstone. Now I don't remember in Fable 1 the castle having the little bridge and the study at the top. I only remember that from the second and third game. Um, I couldn't find any images online of the castle in the first game so I'm not quite sure. However, it does really look like Bowerstone. Now this kind of looks like it could be set before or in between Fable 1 and 2. It can't be after 2 and 3 considering this world looks way more natural and not industrial and it could be set before Fable 1 as the city doesn't look all that developed yet. Remember in Fable 1 Bowerstone had walls around the city but this one doesn't. Also if we zoom in on the top right hand corner you can see a building that kind of resembles the guild. If you remember the guild was actually 
right next door to Bowerstone in Fable 1, so that does kind of, I don't know, it looks like it to me, I could be wrong, but I don't remember having another big area around Bowerstone. Another thing that this could be is a reboot or a remake, considering the name of the game being just Fable, but also because it seems like it was hinted at by the narrator with this line. Check it out. Not all stories have happy endings. But yours has yet to be written. Now that could just be some catchy dialogue saying that we can do whatever we want in the game or it could be a slight hint at the world's narrative starting fresh. Your story is yet to be written. If we take that as just a plain old blanketed statement, it would mean that the story from this game hasn't been documented in books, as in it's not a part of Fable 1, 2 and 3's lore. Aaron Greenberg, an executive at Xbox, done a little interview with the Xbox on YouTube channel after the trailer, and it also seemed like he teased Fable being a reboot. I'll play the clip for you now, check it out. Every week, every month, I would say maybe for years now, yeah. is please bring back Fable. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but you know, making sure that it's done the right way with the right team. And so this is a new beginning for a legendary franchise. So this is a new beginning for a legendary franchise. <laughs> And to give the keys to the Fable Kingdom to a team like Playground, you know, um, right there in the UK, and to let them go imagine, you know, how do they kind of take the fantastical, you know, creatures and the wondrous place that Fable's kind of known for with that typical British humor oh, and yeah. to kind of make it, make it their own. Um, and that's what the trailer was to kind of reveal it, tease it, give you a little look of kind of how they're thinking about Fable. Um, it's nice to see fans reacting so well to that as well. So it does seem like a reboot is the path Playground Games is going down. Personally, I just prefer a complete reboot with most of the already established lore intact. Going forward in time just can't be done as Fable 3 was set in the industrial age. Any further forward and we'll be using assault rifles. I just think that because of the messed up timeline and considering the last main series Fable game released 10 years ago, I think Playground Games starting a fresh world would be best for their creative freedom and for new players or older players that stopped playing the game 10 years ago. But it honestly, doesn't seem to matter at this point as there just isn't enough information out to fully get into all the specifications. Now judging from this shot, it also seems like the game is going to go fully open world. We don't know if it's going to be one big open world or like three, four, five big regions similar to The Witcher 3. However, this really does push the narrative that a big open world is gonna be here instead of the usual 20 something small regions that we've had in Fables 1, 2 and 3. You can see some villages and buildings and lakes and everything close by but the further you look down you start to see just hilltops and mountains uh, with nothing on it. Now that could just be because they haven't built anything there yet and it's in development or it could be that this area with the town and then the village around it is just one big area that you can explore anywhere within but then the mountain peaks and everything like that and the hills you can't go past that. Now there's four more things that I think are important to point out. The first is the narrator isn't Teresa. Teresa voiced the narration for Fable 2 and 3 CGI trailers but she isn't here. This could be either because she hasn't been born yet as it's set before Fable 1 or because the game's a reboot and Teresa doesn't exist in this universe. But it could also be as they want to have her appear as a surprise later on. Not really a big deal but just wanted to point it out. The second thing is the voice actor himself. If you pay attention, it sounds a lot like Stephen Fry who voices Reva. Some also think it could be the Guildmaster who's voiced by Hugo Mayat, but let's just have a quick listen. The world is filled with stories of legendary heroes. Hmm, I don't know, it sounds a lot like a deeper tone Reaver to me, but honestly it could be either one or just a random voice actor we've never heard of before. The other thing to point out with the narrator is what he's actually saying throughout the trailer. He says, The world is filled with stories of legendary heroes and treacherous villains of fantastical creatures and wondrous places where nature and magic live in perfect harmony. So again, what I gather from this is Playground Games saying that this will be a high magic and fantasy fable game, taking it back to the roots of the first game in that aspect. It also seems like a tease of a big open world, as the more inhabitants of the land you want, the more land you need to put them in, meaning you need a big world. And lastly, let's talk release date. Considering this is just a CGI trailer, it's safe to assume the game won't be releasing next year. Usually, once a game's been announced, it takes around two years to release. 
though of course RPGs are very fickle so it could be delayed even further and also now games tend to take longer to be developed anyway so it can be quite scuffed but usually the rule is two years after you announce it you release it but yeah don't expect a Fable release next year unless production of the game is going absolutely amazingly and there are no problems and they release it holiday time but honestly 2022 seems the likely bet. And that's really all I could dissect here. Let me know if I missed something. Overall, I really, really liked this trailer. It felt like Fable to me. I know some were disappointed and I hope that when they do show gameplay that everyone can find something they like. But as you can tell, I'm very, uh, very happy. And yeah, Fable is back, guys. Fable is back.